My name is Mike and I run an open mic company called VegasOnTheMic.com. An open mic is typically started by a musician who wants an outlet for themselves to perform at. So they go and play their own songs and then they say, okay, you can come up on my gear and make it an open mic and we'll get people out, maybe whatever. But I don't perform at my own, own open mic. It's got to be about the artists. It's got to be about the artists, otherwise you're going to, you know, burn out. Since we've started, five open mics have burnt out. My name is Kevin Alberto and I'm a singer-songwriter. A lot of my inspiration comes from different life situations that I'm put through. Um, I speak a lot through metaphor, or I try to. I'm a lot of poetry involved and a lot of it comes from a lot of internal things that I not really able to speak to others with. When it comes to writing something or performing or anything, it's um, really therapy for myself to kind of express myself and what I'm going through to other people. So performing, there's a lot of soul, there's a lot of, there's a lot of emotion being let out. Just like any musician, the dream would be to be playing music all the time and performing for other people all the time, which is where I would like to be, but um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind working the nine to five and playing these open mics that money plays or performing for people that would listen even if it's a small crowd of 20 or 30 people. Like it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's just the way that I am able to actually keep myself sane. So if in 30 years I'm doing the same thing, I'm doing the same thing as long as, as, long as I'm alive, <laughs> I guess. I closed my eyes, I saw red. Question is, what was it that I was feeling? Was it love, was it lust, or was it hatred? Was it anger when I laid both my eyes on you? What I do know is that what is between us is the same sour and we're both breathing. At first, the thing that brought me to the money plays was the recordings and um, being able to actually get something solid and listen back to what I did that night. Um, but eventually I got sucked into all the people that I met there and it wasn't even about oh it's networking to the other artists it ended up being different friendships that I developed it's a it's a community it's Vegas on the mic has done something completely unique for the city it's brought a very broad, broad spectrum of artists from comedians to musicians and brought them all into one room and actually let them all kind of be some kind of society. Well, I'll gather the wood and I'll build us a raft. It's still up to you if you'll take my hand. But if you choose to sink with the rest of the city, all I can say is that I'm so, so sorry. All I can say is that I'm so, 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 so sorry. So uh, a little bit about myself. My name is Kyle Jones. Sometimes I can't tell if I have Alzheimer's or if um. So a little bit about myself. My name is Kyle Jones. Sometimes I can't tell if I have Alzheimer's <laughs> or if um, people are just... So a little bit about myself. My name is Kyle Jones. Sometimes I can't tell if I have Alzheimer's or if people are just not important enough to remember. One uh, comic that, that I saw that I really uh, grasped onto and thought like, you know, I could probably do this too, was Zach Galifianakis. They had this whole thing about just going out in the audience and just like winging it. 
you know, it's like half of mine is just like, it's written and it's memorized to the best of my abilities. The other half is improv. It's like going out in the audience, standing on chairs, you know, just doing stuff that's just off the top of my head. It's like with him as a comedian and as a performer, like, there's that sense of like not giving a shit what the audience thinks and just not fucking caring. Because in my mind, like, I know what I'm, what I wrote is funny and if I can get away with making people laugh or at least making one person laugh, then that's perfect. That just makes my night. So America, I'm fascinated by your honey bobo. Mostly because in my home country, we make pornographic movies where little girls like her are beaten with Cabbage Patch dolls. <laughs> and are forced to eat sawdust. <laughs> because that's what gets us off, yeah. So I was in my meth lab yesterday, and my dog was all like, do? And I was like, do host. <laughs> And, and my dog was all like, do host mish. And I was like, do host mish. My dog was like, do host mish dish fart. I was like, do host mish dish fart. Oh, my dog, Evanescence, is crazy. You have got to meet him. Uh, my favorite thing about the open mics is just, uh, just being able to meet people. Because, like, at heart, I'm an introverted person. You know, and I, and I chose, like, this year to be like, well, I don't want to fucking be that person, and I'm going to force myself to be uncomfortable and just be, like, in front of people on a mic and try to connect to other human beings. Harlan Williams once said, like, to him, comedy was all about pain. Yeah, and there's, like, a lot of my favorite comics, like, they've always taken, like... A, like events and things that happened to them and managed to make it funny. Because since I started doing comedy this summer, like, uh, like things that have happened to me, like, like rejection and like, you know, depression, like things like that are like way easier to deal with now. Now that I'm able to find a way to make it funny and make other people laugh and have them able to laugh at their own, you know, depression and rejection and, you know, shit like that. Like, like that's the best thing about it comedy like that's why I do it is because I'm a very lonely person who thinks about death too much I shouldn't listen to so much Nine Inch Nails but you know what I'm unemployed I need to get paid right now to do what I do give me money this next joke is brought to you by Monsanto <laughs> just fucking eat it you don't care you know what? Maybe I don't want to be oh, Santa. Oh no shit. You're in hell. This fucking guy. Fucking. Go bring it home. I fucking hate kids. I should be in Portland right now, but fucking suicide girls. Yeah. 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 Fucking dad had to die. I had to take over the fucking family business. Jesus. Kids expect me. Kids expect me to eat all their cookies that they leave behind. I fucking, I eat one plate, I throw it the fuck away. Guys, promise me this, that if you're gonna leave behind cookies, just leave behind beer. Maybe whiskey and pot, maybe morphine. That'd be awesome. I fucking hate kids. You know those commercials where uh, Santa sees, like the kids see Santa? In real life, I had to fucking kill them. My policy is no child left behind. A year and a half ago, I was playing on the street, and I said, what if anyone can just come in off the street and walk away with photos, recordings, video, and just be set to sell that stuff on their own and, and make a living from it? It'd be awesome. I really want local music to be on a whole nother level in Las Vegas. So I took the last of everything I had, and I put it into this idea I had for an open mic. I went to bar owners and I said, hey, what do you think, you know, can we pull this off? And Stan at Money Plays was the only bar owner that sat down and talked to me and listened to what I had to say. We kicked it off a, exactly a year ago and there were nine people our first night, nine people. And now we get, you know, 90 people a night, you know, we, we really do pack them in. We've built a really loyal following. 
Give it up for that Greenway kid, everybody. Give a hand. Thanks, guys. All right, so this is called Tripwires. Neon lights won't die until we tell them to. Same for you and I, and it's an awful truth. This light but crushing feeling makes me weak. We talk from far away, so tell me pretty things. Why the bar isn't set so high These tripwires aren't so hard to find That I should have to try Is that a reason for me to stay? I've broken down these boundaries anyways There isn't much left that I should have to say Lights are off my head up in the clouds I could not see too far, so I left the ground. Anchor me and hold me down. Whisper words, bury me in quiet sound. My name's Josh. Uh, I am a musician here in Vegas. I run around and call myself that Greenway Kid, and sometimes I play in a band called The Terrible Figures. I've been running the open mic gambit here for a little bit in Vegas, um, but Vegas on the mic is really unique. Everybody's really closely knit, um, and we all really support new acts who come out and things like that. Um, so I've had a serious opportunity for growth because I have a lot of friends there who give me constructive feedback, and people there always like respond positively to the stuff I do, even when I don't do so hot. So it's a really great outlet for kind of trying new things and working on old things. I've been in music since I was in seventh grade. Um, I picked up a clarinet and then shortly after that followed the saxophone. But I've been playing guitar and I've been playing guitar since I was in, I was a freshman in high school, um, but I wasn't taking it seriously. And then as a senior, I was like, I don't have any life choices to make. I'm just gonna, or plans, I'm just gonna play guitar. So I, tried, I started taking it seriously when I was like 18, 19. And then I started teaching myself to sing then too. I love the idea of being a touring artist. I would love to just play music full time. And I've, I've realized recently that I'm not really cut out for a whole lot else, no matter what my job background looks like. I just can't stand doing anything else long term. So, you know, one way or the other, I've got to make it as a musician or I don't think I'm going to make it at all. <laughs> Sometimes I'll read like a news article or something and I'll construct like some sort of abstract story from it that's not at all what happened. Um, and I'll take circumstances to extremes because to me that's the most powerful thing in music is when you take something to an extreme. But then I also like to look at what's going on with my friends and their lives and uh, what's going on. And my friends are all a major source of inspiration for me, especially lately. Um, almost all of my new stuff is about what's going on with the people who are closest to me. One of the most challenging things as an artist who's just starting out is being self-critical. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people need to not be afraid of. Um, you've you've got to be willing to analyze yourself and you've got to be able to you've got to be able to hear who you are now as an artist and who you want to be and where the potential lies for growth and kind of make those connections. And I feel like that's something that not a lot of artists hear enough. You back up slowly because you just wanna run. It's raining tears for years, won't you let me in? Before I get so through and lose my taste for living again. Before we both get bored and store this damn you all me to give. And your heart's all cold, waiting for hours to waste the days. It's hard getting by it all, with nothing but words to say. I used to work on the strip for a couple years. I worked on the strip. Anybody else here ever work on the strip? All right, fuck all you guys. And uh, I worked in the, in the hotels and stuff, and when 
I, I hate using public restrooms, but you have to. If you're there for like six or eight hours, you end up having to use public restrooms. But I sit down to pee. So in public restrooms, I have to stand up. But what if you're not peeing? You got to sit down. So then you got to use that little paper thing and you got to put it on the toilet seat. And it's a big hassle because you, you're rushing and you put the paper thing on the toilet seat and then you go to undo your pants and then the automatic sensor makes it flush and sucks it down in there. And you, Fuck. Sometimes you get lucky, though, and there's like a couple of pee spots on the seat, so it'll make the paper thing stick, and it'll stay there. While you can... Yes! I outsmarted you, automatic sensor. P. It's a natural adhesive. Uh, so my name's Jan Flugum, and uh, I'm a comedian and a writer, and uh, uh, that's what I do. The thing about comedy is that it, it, with most open mics, you're, you're performing in front of a room of just five other comics in a dive bar. That's not going to help you. Comedians don't laugh at the same thing that normal people laugh at. So you, your, your material ends up changing to get laughs out of the room so that it becomes really morbid or industry specific. But normal people aren't going to laugh at that kind of stuff. The reason Vegas on the mic is great is because most of the people in the room are not comics. They're other musicians or poets or whatever. Really, it's a, it's a really genuine response and what an artist needs to grow is genuine feedback. It's a really loving room and so people um, always clap, people always clap, but if you're good, they'll blow up for you. They, they'll still, okay, thanks for doing it, but then when it's good and they like it, they'll let you know. And people will cross the room after you get off stage to be like, hey man, I really liked, and they'll tell you X, Y, and Z, what about it they liked. Um, I love doing stand-up comedy and performing live and stand-up comedy and being on a microphone. But ultimately, I want a TV uh, movie career. That's what I've always wanted. So I see stand-up comedy as just a way to kind of get into that. And I like to write also. So writing uh, shows and sketches and things like that. And if I could get paid for my art in any of those ways, that would be great. Um, I accidentally saw my mom's tits recently. Well, <laughs> I said accidentally. It was terrible. Not because they were like hard, like bad to look at or anything. Not that I enjoyed seeing them, but like she just got a tit job, so like they were nice. I was just like. Good job. You get what you pay for. Um, also, accidentally, I recently I, I accidentally came on my own face. Not related, different. Not because of the earlier thing. Uh, and I don't see what everybody's complaining about. I don't see what the big deal is. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, that wasn't that bad. Uh, seeing the mom's boobs, though, that was traumatizing. Um, what I'd like to do personally for this open mic, video every week. I want to put video content on the web. I want to take these artists to radio stations. I want to put video uh, from the radio stations on the web. I want to take these artists to studios. I want to get collabor uh, collaborations with studios. All this stuff we can do if you, you know, have something that's popular and has a wide exposure. People are willing to jump in on something like that.